most of you probably think Canada absolutely sucks. But it wasn't always like this. Yes, these are French Canadians. I bet you think I'm lying to you. Given the mockery they've become. On Patreon, you can support my films as my patron. You will join my team on Patreon. You will receive some things. The credits, the edits, the playlist. UFC demonetize my content. Dana White doesn't like my accent. God damn it, I don't know what it is about your face, but I want to deliver one of these right in your suckle. You too. A new player entered the game. I wouldn't normally make a video on someone who has obvious brain damage. Patrick Gavia, the UFC's worst documentarian. I'm a failed football player, I'm a failed musician, but ironically, I quit my full-time job to become a YouTuber. I'll be releasing documentary-style content on subjects that I'm passionate about. I want my content to entertain, educate, but mostly challenge the perceptions that we have of things. This is Patrick Gavia's first YouTube video. His risk evidently paid off, as he's seen massive success in a very short time. But his decision seems extremely stupid, or maybe just extremely French a job that I liked, working with people that I loved, in a media company that did do meaningful work. So what's wrong with me? What? As you can see, Patrick Gavia was basically a content cuck. So why did I quit? Well, I heard Steven Spielberg say something a while back. I left my job to build a life that my six-year-old self dreamed of doing the things that my six-year-old self dreamed of. This is such a French-Canadian thing to say. They are all art school rejects. Half the city of Montreal is unemployed artists. They actually think jugglers and mimes have social value. Pay attention to Patrick's spastic hands. We were supposed to get married this summer, but the pandemic happened, so we pushed it the next summer, and I just quit my job. Yep. So. <laughs> no pressure. The guy literally doesn't touch her once in the entire video. Bro, my hands would be all over those flexing on you fuckers. Who the fuck quits their job entirely when they have a wedding plan? If Tata's like that. Motorboat? You play the motorboat? You motorboat and set up. Patrick's passion isn't even MMA. He is using it as a quick way to get subs. He is inspired by the Lion King. He wants to educate, entertain, and enlighten you. Imagine using this sort of language. It's so arrogant and so French Canadian. He also doesn't do any of his own work. He has three full-time and one part-time employee. He pays people to do two weeks of research, briefly goes over this, and hands it off. How this is a significant time investment is beyond me. Not only this, he complains about being demonetized.
Listen to this nonsense. Nigerian immigrants joined the UFC to free his innocent dad from prison. That is one of the most ignorant and biased statements I have ever heard. Throughout a 20 minute long video specifically focused on the criminal past of Kumaru Usman's father, Patrick Gavia does not mention once his past criminal record of drunk driving and theft. Omitting important information like this is a pattern throughout Gavia's investigative journalism. Missing this is inexcusable. In fact, it's impossible. It's the first thing that comes up on Google. Note how Gavia intentionally misrepresents this story. Starts a company and delegates the billing to an external firm. Fermi hired committed fraud. Civil investigation is long. Drop the investigation and settle with Mohammed. He even signs an NDA. The billing firm gets caught doing the same thing in other businesses. The code is so vast. If the feds really want you, they could find something. They create less jail time with the prosecution in exchange for ratting out Mohammed. Those people, you know, they would they would rat out their own mother to get a lower sentence. Did you get him released? The First Step Act. The First Step Act is intended to do two things. Cut unnecessarily long federal sentences and improve conditions in prison. This video is problematic for so many reasons. Gavia presents his films as investigative documentaries. Yet he does not even do his own research, apparently. Neither does his team. Second, he, or more likely his team, omit vitally important information either through incompetence or malice. He is basing the thesis of his documentary on nothing more than the word of Usman and his criminal father. Besides this, he provides no evidence apart from a brief interview with the defense attorney retained by the Usmans. This man's job is to run public relations for his clients. This was a golden opportunity to press the man on the facts of the case, but Patrick sits there with this look on his face. On top of not even asking a single tough question to this lawyer, he does not reach out to the district attorney's office or prosecution for their side of the story. Nor does he attempt to access the discovery from the case. The discovery is quite literally the fucking facts. Let's listen to how Patrick frames Francis Ngannou's story. How does a 10-year-old sand miner from Africa become the scariest man on the planet? Francis gets kicked out of school because he can't afford the supplies. From the age of only 10 years old, he starts working in a sand mine. Just in the first few minutes of this video alone, Gavia completely misrepresents Francis' childhood and uses emotionally provocative images that do not reflect the reality in Ganu faced. How long did you have to work in these uh, sand mines? Until I left school, until I find out I left school, I was 17. Francis gets kicked out of school because he can't afford the supplies. From the age of only 10 years old, he starts working in a sand mine. In this open cast mine, hundreds of artisanal miners are working in waters soiled by mercury. Among them, dozens of children, including girls, sometimes younger than five. Growing up doing something like that, first of all, it had to be very difficult. That work was meant for adult, but we didn't have any option. So adult doesn't want to work because it's raining all the time. Guess what? That was our opportunity. Otherwise, they will come back to their job. We will not have job, right. you know? So that was a good opportunity to work on. And Ganu did not escape Africa. That implies he is a refugee. He is an illegal immigrant who did not flee war or economic or environmental disaster. He chose to leave to pursue a boxing career in Europe. 
I realized that I couldn't, I mean, I knew, I kind of like knew that I couldn't make it from Cameroon. I recovered from that. That was the moment that I'm like, okay, I need to do this the right way, you know, which is first of all, leave Cameroon, go to some country that I have the opportunity. Gavia has not done his due diligence or he is intentionally leaving out important facts to push a specific narrative. Is Patrick Gavia exhibiting incompetence or malice? Let's see how Patrick Gavia challenges the mainstream perceptions around Israel and the sun. You feel different sometimes. Oh God, he's dressed up as Mr. Fucking Rogers. Sometimes I feel different too. And when I'm sad, I read my favorite story. Once upon a time, in the distant land of China, lived a man equally loved and hated by all. Izzy was one of the realm's bravest combatants. But just like any hero, Izzy had a nemesis. Izzy expected to get back to training, become a better, stronger fighter. But a strange thing happened instead. This creature called the Internet creeped into his head. I knew I was black, obviously, I knew my skin color was dark, but I never knew it was a problem. And it was weird for me. It was really weird for me. You get picked on, you get cast aside in a way, like an outcast, because you're different. I got bullied a lot. Like when I used to get bullied, I'd be shaking my knees. The following clip, you'll see how Izzy has grown from this trauma to become an upstanding 33-year-old man who has a positive influence. Because this cracker to tell me who the fuck I am, who the fuck Kamaru is, who the fuck Nganu is. I'm like... Are you dumb? But the fact that as a fucking cracker to tell me who the fuck I am. To bring color into it, for me, is the most ridiculous thing ever. Oh shit. This should tell you everything you need to know about Patrick Gavia's character and research abilities. He is just parroting typical mainstream media narratives. Sure, Izzy had an arguably tough childhood. Izzy has led his negative experiences as a child, turn him into everything he claims to hate. Uh, that was, I'm petty, bro. I remember. So the first time he knocked me out in Brazil, um, his son came into the ring and then started to just lie dead next to me. And I'm like, you little asshole. I'll whoop your ass if your dad don't do it for you. But then, um, yeah, I looked for his kid and I, lo I pointed at him and I saw him and I was like, hey, hey, hey. Just to remind him, bro, I'm... <laughs> hey, man, if you can crawl, we can brawl. Izzy is a morally reprehensible individual. He is a hypocrite, a bully, and a racist. And the thing is, he's in his 30s. Attempting to elicit sympathy for such an individual by appealing to trauma they experienced 20 years ago as a youth is intellectually dishonest. Would you expect anything else from Patrick Gavia? I won't exhaust you all with examples. I think the bias in Gavia's documentaries is apparent. Especially when compared to how he frames the stories around certain fighters. Yes, Dustin Poirier can be a bit of a sore loser and he used to get into fights as a kid. But he lives in the same town that raised him he is with the same woman who always supported him. And he gives back to the community that gave to him. It's also worth noting how Patrick Gavia frames Covington's story versus Usman's. But to top it all off, look at how he attempts to portray John Jones. Tragedy is open to interpretation, but I fail to see how the story of a man who has never faced repercussions for his actions is tragic. A black man can't drink, <laughs> getting elected into the Hall of Fame, and now this is what I got? Do you? I'm a officer. I'm 
He signed one of the largest deals in UFC history just months after this event. The reason John continues to act this way is because he's never been held accountable. Not by his family, not by the UFC, not by the MMA media, but what else would you expect from a man who is living out his six-year-old fantasies? I left my job to build a life that my six-year-old self dreamed of, doing the things that my six-year-old self dreamed of. So, why did I make this video? Patrick Gavia is 10 out of 10 malicious. He is not like Ariel Helwani and Luke Thomas, who seem to genuinely hold the ideologies that are mirrored in Gavia's documentaries. He doesn't care about MMA. He doesn't care about black people. He doesn't care about any of the narratives he pushes. He is desperate to be a director, a filmmaker, an artist. Patrick Gavia is an opportunist of the worst kind. He isn't incompetent. He's calculated and malicious. The MMA community absolutely deserves better. Demon Bobby. Demon Mommy.